Hey, good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you can join us this morning and uh, worship with us. Uh, I uh, want to make mention of something and then we'll pray together. I uh, want to remind everybody, in case you didn't know, that next weekend on July the 5th, uh, we, will not be, we, not, we will not be gathering in person. We will not be meeting in person. Uh, the school in which we're meeting in, Pleasant View Christian, already had uh, some things already lined up that have to be done to the facility over that weekend, uh, refinishing some floors and things. And so uh, that's happening. And, and we told them we understood that from the get-go. Uh, so we'll be online only. We'll still have an online service. So uh, be sure to tune in for that. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll get a surprise in there of something. So, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, July 5th. So make sure that uh, you tune in next week as well. And uh, thank you for tuning in this week. I, I want to uh, I want to jump into this and uh, I want to pray uh, over uh, what we're going to talk about today and uh, just ask God to open our hearts to that. So let's pray. God, I thank you so much for uh, all that you've done for us, um, for especially sending Jesus for us, especially, uh, Lord, your mercy, your grace. Uh, Lord, we don't deserve it, uh, but God, you have given it to us, uh, and you are wonderful in doing so. Um, God, we recognize that today, and, and God, I just pray that uh, even right now, Lord, as, as we're seeking you and seeking your word, God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts about our hearts today. Uh, help us to see uh, through lies that we might buy into and things like that, Lord, to believe things that are not true. Uh, help us to understand your truth uh, and to follow you. God, uh, help our hearts to look like yours. Um, God, we need that and uh, we rely on you for it. So lead us uh, and uh, Lord, speak to you through your word today. And uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so this uh, message I'm sharing with you uh, this morning uh, is uh, one that uh, is kind of funny that uh, I've, I've had several people kind of make mention of things like this that I have talked about in the past. And I have done a message on this in the past, probably very similar to this message. I purposely did not let myself go back and look at my notes or listen to that message uh, and uh, on purpose because I, I just, I really kind of felt led to this somewhat too because of just of having uh, several conversations in the last couple of weeks with people about this particular thing. Uh, and it's surrounding, uh, you know, this little saying that we hear uh, of, you know, follow your heart. Now, and I've, I've made, you know, tons of jokes over the years about, you know, you go to somebody's house and you'll see, you know, painted on the wall or something, follow your heart or whatever. And, and you know, and, and the joke I've made is that it's not a biblical statement. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good statement for us to adopt. Uh, and of course, well-meaning people have no idea of that. And so uh, I just love, you know, kind of poking at people about it. Uh, but I want to talk about that this morning. Uh, the, you know, if you uh, lived through the 80s, then you maybe remember a, a band called the Scorpions. Uh, they were an 80s metal band, and uh, had uh, they had a, a hit called uh, Rocky Like a Hurricane, and of course they had Winds of Change, if you remember that. That was a big one, uh, you know, when the when the wall came down, and all, you know, all this all this kind of stuff, you know, big, even kind of historic in, in a way uh, of all that. But uh, they also had a song called Don't Follow Your Heart, and it's funny because I, I, I just was curious, like I knew there would be songs, and I honestly don't remember much about that song, but I went and listened to some of that song earlier today. And and that song uh, is very much what a friend of mine used to refer to as a an 80s you can do it song. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, you know, there were all these songs, especially in the 80s, that were like the you can do it type songs. They're the songs that's like you're going to listen to before you go out to play the big game or, you know, whatever it is. And then, you know, uh, you know, songs like, you know, uh, Karate Kid, you're the best, you're the best around, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, same, same kind of thing, same kind of premise, but it was, you know this song and it's called don't you know it's called follow your heart um today i want to talk about why we don't want to follow our hearts and uh and that sounds a little crazy but i i think i think you'll go with me there i think you'll understand once we get into this uh you know that a statement like you know follow your heart has such a a liberating tone to it of like you know oh yes you know go that way and 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 be one with the whatever and all this kind of stuff uh and the truth is is that um you know th that's that's not necessarily good for us because uh one of the things that 
we understand about our hearts, and and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna share with you a little bit from a from a, a blog that John Bloom with Desiring God did uh, that it was just too good not to. I'm actually gonna share a couple sections of it. It's just too good to not share uh, this morning. Um, and and he talks about this, but he talks about how our hearts aren't meant to lead us. God didn't create us with hearts that are supposed to lead us. And that may, be, that may be a thought that maybe you have never thought about before. Uh, but the truth is, is that God created us with a heart that needs to be led. And so our hearts needing to be led need to be led by God himself. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, for us, I think this this morning as we're, you know, thinking about this, uh, you know, I think I think this is true when we think about things like uh, sometimes we hear things uh, that we don't want to hear and our hearts say, I don't want to hear that. And we want to shun that. And, and so we, we can understand, you know, that there are things that we hear in this world that, you know, are not pleasant to hear or whatever. But, but the truth is sometimes things that we are hearing are things that we need to hear and our hearts being sinful, you know, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. We're all, we're all in that, we're all in that boat. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? Um, and, you know, for us just to get just the very basic understanding that our hearts lead us to sin and oftentimes lead us away from truth is a is a really big thing for us today. I want to read I want to read an excerpt from this blog I talked about from John Bloom. It says this. It says until you consider that your heart has sociopathic tendencies, think about it for a moment. What does your heart tell you? And he's asking this question then he says, "Please don't answer. Your heart has likely said things today that you would not wish to repeat. I know mine has. My heart tells me that all of reality ought to serve my desires. My heart likes to think the best of me and the worst of others, unless those others happen to think well of me, then they are wonderful people. Does this sound familiar? But if they don't think well of me, or even if they just disagree with me, well then, something is wrong with them. And while my heart is pondering my virtues and others' errors, it can suddenly find some immoral or horribly angry thought very attractive. I think that that speaks to us today. We're so much there, like we don't want anybody around us that disagrees with us sometimes and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and the truth is, is that sometimes we, we need to hear honest, loving opinions of people that care for us, uh, you know, even, even if it's something that we don't want to hear. Jeremiah seventeen nine says this, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I'll read that again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I mean, does that sound like something we want to follow? Something that is deceitful? Something that is sick? No, we don't, we don't, we don't want to follow our hearts. We think we do. Uh, it sounds nice, you know, uh, but this spills over into so many areas of our lives and, and, and our hearts lead us to sin. Matthew 15, 19 says this, for out of the heart come evil thoughts. And then it gives a few examples, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. That's just a few things, and we're obviously just pulling a little bit of that passage right there. You know, Jesus is trying to help us to see that we're not supposed to follow our hearts. We're supposed to follow something else. John Bloom, again, says this in his blog on DesiringGod.com. If we make our hearts gods, literally make our hearts gods, that we would follow them, right? If we make our hearts gods and ask them to lead us, they will lead us to narcissistic misery and ultimately damnation. They cannot save us because what's wrong with our hearts is the heart of our problem. But if our hearts believe in God as they are designed to, then God saves us and leads our hearts to exceeding joy. Therefore, don't believe in your heart. 
Direct your heart to believe in God. Don't follow your heart, follow Jesus. Note that Jesus did not say to his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled, just believe in your hearts. He said, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. Our, heart, our hearts long for something. They're longing for something. It's why we're so quick to like try to find something to cling to and things when, the, when we feel like the, the ship is going down. You know what I'm saying? And, and our hearts long for something, and, and we see what they're longing for in Psalm 42. In Psalm 42, in verse 1, it says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts, verse 2, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And then in verse 33, David says something here that very much resonates with us, I think. He says, he's just being honest, he's sharing his heart. He says, my tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? And I think that that's where so many times we go. I, you know, as somebody who has struggled with depression at times in my life, uh, man, verse three, Psalm forty-two, boom, big, big verse. And and here's and here's what I see in this verse. I see I see David being honest, and he's lamenting. You know, I've had these moments when my tears have been my food day and night. When I've let that be what leads me, when I've let that heart be what is consuming me. What do our hearts long for? They long for God. Our hearts long for God. Why? Because they were created to long for God. We were created needing to worship something all the time. God created us to worship You may say, that sounds egotistical of God. Not if you think about the fact that God knows that He is the very best thing for us. And He wants us to have Him. He wants us to have a relationship with Him, which happens through what happened in Him, the Father, sending His Son, Jesus, to die for us. That we might be forgiven of our sin and be a part of the family of God. And all we have to do is believe. It's not about how, it's not about how much we, you know, follow God over following our hearts or whatever it is. The truth is, is we know that we we fail at that from time to time. We live in this world where we are feeding things to our heart all the time. And a lot of those things are desires that uh, are the things that abound for us in this world that we can feast on from the buffet of life, of all these things that we don't need. I don't know if you like a buffet, but every once in a while, I dig a good buffet. The Chinese buffet is probably my favorite. Uh, I, I remember days of old when you used to be able to go get crab legs whenever you wanted to at a Chinese buffet. You remember that? I don't know what happened to that. I guess we ate too many crab legs and cost them too much money. But uh, every once in a while, you still can get that. Uh, might have to pay a little extra or something for it. But one of the things I love about the Chinese buffet is I can go and I can get a little General Sal. I can get a little chicken on a stick. I can get a little fried shrimp. Uh, you know, all, all these things that I love. And, and then lastly, this thing, this, this thing that tops it off for me, which is probably so weird for so many people, is that I have this thing for cafeteria-style chocolate pudding, Right? Isn't that amazing stuff? Like, I don't know why I like that. I mean, but if it's cold, I mean, I want a bowl of it. It's terrible for me, right? You know? And it's very much what we do in this life with how we feed our hearts. And instead of pushing our hearts to follow the Lord and to follow God and allowing them, our heart, to feast on him and spend time with him, it starts to stray. And we start to find other desires in this world. And those things become the things that we worship. They become our idols. And they end up most of the time hurting us and destroying things around us. David finishes that psalm in Psalm 42 in verse 11, and he says this. He says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? 
And why are you in turmoil with me? Hope in God. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Tim Keller says this in uh, something, uh, another blog post uh, on the Gospel Coalition. And he says this, he says, The only heroic narrative we've got left in our culture is the individual looking inside, seeing who they want to be, and asserting that over and against everyone else in society. I'm going to read that again. The only heroic narrative we've got left in our culture is the individual looking inside, seeing who they want to be, and asserting that over and against everyone else in society. It's, it's going back to that, whatever I've come up with inside of me is better than everything else going on and everybody else's opinion and truth in of itself no longer matters. And that's right where Satan wants us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy our families. He wants to destroy our churches. And it all comes back to this, what's right for me is right for me, and it doesn't matter what anybody else or anything else says. And that, that ends up including the truth of God itself. We know better than that. We know that God loves us and he cares for us very much, and we don't want that to be our narrative. In fact, we don't want people to think that we've got it figured out on our own. In fact, we want, we want people to be led to Jesus. We want them to see in us that we don't have it together, but we know the guy that does. And in that, they can see in us our reliance and our hope in Christ alone. Matthew 16, 24 says this. It says, Then Jesus told the disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. I'm going to read that again. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Will find it. For what Will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? God cares about us. He loves us. He recognizes that the very best thing for us, for our hearts, is Him. What did, what did, what did David say? He said, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I think today we need to recognize in our lives that there are so many things pulling at us, but the thing that we need the most is our relationship with the Lord itself. And maybe, maybe you've been in cruise control. I think that's been a real easy thing for a lot of people to kind of end up in during quarantine and all these things. Uh, maybe that's where you've been for the last little while. Maybe you've not really been seeking the Lord. Let me just encourage you, seek the Lord, spend time with Him. Let your soul feast on God Himself. I, I can't tell you that just the how how amazing it is when I get to just be in Scripture, and 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 how amazing it is that every, it seems like everything in my life, even though I'm in ministry, that everything in my life fights against me spending time with God some days. And the very thing that I need the most is to be with Him, to allow Him to speak into my life and into my heart. To be reminded that to follow Jesus, I am to deny myself, to take up my to take up the cross and follow him. You know, that's 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 this huge piece for us today. To be reminded that Jesus is our shepherd and that we're not supposed to follow our heart. We're supposed supposed to follow Jesus. This morning I'm praying for you wherever you are, and I'm going to pray right now that you would follow the Lord 
and that the Lord would speak to your heart. And, and maybe you're struggling with something right now. Maybe it's sin. Maybe it's something else in your life uh, that you know has become the thing, the idol, the thing that your, your heart is feasting on, and it's not good for you. Maybe, maybe you need help with that. Maybe you need to talk to somebody about that. That's okay. We would love to talk with you. Uh, ben will talk about that in just a minute, how you can get in touch with us. We'd love to spend time with you if we can over the phone, uh, email, messaging, whatever it takes. Uh, we want to care for you. We want to love you. Uh, Jesus loves you. And today we are reminded not to follow our heart, but to follow him. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the chance that we have, Lord, to come to you, to come to your word, to feast on it for just a few minutes and how good it is for us to get to do that. God, I pray that we would be reminded that we need that. We need that. Lord, that we're, we find joy in that. God, our joy is in you. And God, we're looking for joy in all these things and all these places. And the truth is, is it's right in front of our faces. God, help us to embrace what you've given us in your love and your care and your affection. Lord, your son sent for us, not because we deserve it, but because you love us to give us life, to give us meaning, to give us purpose. God, may we seek that. May we seek your purpose for our lives. Lord, may we seek what you have for us and stop seeking our own. God, help us to see our need for you, to follow you in all things, God, and, and help us to experience the joy that you have for us in this life and in the one to come. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen.